Hi there, it's Simon Hurley and I'm a 15 year old card maker here at scrapbook.com and in this lesson I'm super excited to share how to use watercolor markers on your cards and create some really cool backgrounds and use them to color in some really awesome images. So let's turn down to my work surface and get started. I'm starting off by using this Hero Arts background stamp with all these little palm leaves on here and we're going to use this to create a fun background with some distress markers. So I'm going to start off by taking the markers here with the brush nib and kind of hold the marker sideways so the nib doesn't get ruined. You don't want to hold it like this. And then just start coloring onto your stamp. You can kind of almost scribble onto your stamp and create some different color patterns here and there. And you can add more or less of one color depending on what you want. Then I'm going to move on to the next color and just make sure you're using colors that won't make mud together. So I'm doing red and blue next to each other which will create a purple color. And usually you won't have too many problems with creating a brown color. And if you do I'll show you how to fix that in a little bit. So I'm going to continue coloring on this background stamp until the whole surface that I want to be stamped down is all covered up. And then we'll have our fun background that we can stamp down. So after this is all colored in, I'm going to grab a spray bottle to mist the surface of this and get all those markers to kind of react. So that's all reacted with water now. And then I can take my card base here, my top folding card base, and I'm going to flip it over and stamp it right down into that background and give some good pressure all over the card so that the ink seeps into the paper and will give a nice stamped impression. So once that's complete, I can flip it over and here I have my colorful background. Now like I talked about, if you have any muddy color that you don't really want that looks a little bit gray, you can always go in with a paper towel onto your surface and just kind of pick up some of those areas that have a little too much water or a little too much color on them and kind of soften the color out. And then your background is complete. If you're impatient like me and don't want to wait for this to dry, I'm going to heat it up and heat set this all, but you could just let it sit out and dry as well and that'll give the same effect. When you're heating your card stack up here and if it's curling up a little bit and getting kind of warped, you can always flip it to the back side and heat that up too. It'll kind of make it kind of return to its original shape, but there might still be a little warpage just from heat drying it and from all that water that got to it. So you can kind of just bend it back into the shape that it was and shape it back out to your regular card. Now I'm going to move on to stamping and coloring the sloth image that's going to go onto the background. So I'm pulling in a piece of Bristol cardstock here. This is really smooth cardstock that our markers that we're about to use will kind of sit on top of and give a little bit of blending time when we're using them. So I'm going to pull out my stamped image here from this sloth stamp set from Lawn Fawn. And I just love this little image and I'm going to add it to an acrylic black. Then I'm going to use archival ink here because it's waterproof and none of the lines will smear when we're using our markers next. So I'm going to take that and stamp it right down there. And you get a nice crisp image there. And then we're going to move on to coloring this in. So I'm going to be using the Zig Art and Graphic Twin Markers here. They have a brush nib on one side which is kind of like a real paintbrush with these bristles here. So it's almost like you're painting with a real paintbrush. And then the other side has kind of a pen tip so if you like journaling that's great for those as well. And then these markers can also, if you go quickly to them, they can water out on your surface and give a nice watercolor. Or when you're using them you can add them down onto your surface and grab the blender pen that comes with it which is just 000 and that has a nice blending ink that will help blend out these markers on your surface. And I find that Bristol Smooth cardstock works best when you're working with these markers. So now let's move on to coloring in the image. I'm just going to take some browns here to start off by coloring in the branch. And I just like to add a little bit of marker wherever it would be darkest so adding some shadows where his little arms would cast on the branch. And then I have the choice of using either one of these. I'm just going to go in with the blender pen here to kind of blend that out. But either works pretty similarly. Then to color in the sloth I'm going to grab more of a red brown and kind of paint that right on inside here. 
just going where the darkest spots would be. So our one line kind of meets the other. And I'm gonna add some color down his arms as well. And on this time I'm gonna blend it out using the watercolor brush just to show you guys kind of a variation. They both react pretty similarly when you're coloring them out and you kind of have the option of using either one. Then to clean out the water brush, I'm just going to kind of scribble it off into a paper towel on the side. And you're gonna do the same thing with the blender marker to clean that out. Coloring in the face, I'm just going in with a light peach tone and some blue for his little eyes. And I can blend that out with the blender marker. Then I'm gonna clean it and go right back in for that blue. And if you wanna add some shading to this, you can go in while it's still wet and add some really fun details to it. Now it won't show up like it regularly would, but it just adds a little bit of that darker color. It kind of blends in with the other marker. And you can go back and water that out as well. After that's all complete, I'm gonna take some scissors just to cut this image out. And I'm gonna go right around it, leaving a little white border. That way it'll stand out from the colorful background that we've created. Once that's all cut out, I'm gonna set this off to the side and I can start working on the little panel that will kind of ground the little sloth. So I'm gonna use some Distress Oxide here in Broken China and a mini round ink blending tool. And I'm gonna pick up some of the ink here. And then I'm going to go right onto my surface and just start ink blending it. Now this doesn't need to be too perfect. It's kind of like a pigment ink, so it doesn't dry right away. So you have a little bit of time to kind of blend it all together right onto the surface. So once you've created that pretty simple background, I'm gonna take a little mister bottle here and barely even touch it, which creates some little drops onto there. Then you can let that set for a little minute and you can pat it dry with a paper towel and that'll lift off some of that color. And to make this dry a little quicker, you can just heat set it pretty quickly. So now to adhere all of this together, I'm gonna to start off with this little background piece here. And I'm gonna add some foam tape right on the back. So I'm just gonna rip little pieces off of there and add it right onto the back. This doesn't add too much dimension, but it just makes it pop up a little bit off your card. And then I can add this right onto the background panel there. Then I'm gonna use some of that extra foam tape to adhere down the little sloth. And we're gonna make it pop up off that little background piece. And adding this little pieces of foam tape just makes it pop off the card and stand out a little bit from the rest of your background. So then to finish all this off, we're gonna need a sentiment down here. For the sentiment, I'm just going to stamp this little hello from the stamp set onto some white cardstock here. So I'm gonna attach that to an acrylic block. and then stamp it down with some archival ink. To cut the sentiment out, I'm gonna line it up in my paper trimmer and trim right along there so I have a nice little border on either side. And then to create a fun result here, I'm gonna cut this with my scissors, just straight along those edges. So then I'm gonna take these two little pieces here and line them up on top of each other so that they're even. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and cut once in the center and twice from either side going down into that middle cut. And that creates a fun kind of ribbon edge that you would have. And then we can make a fun little banner with this. Then to add this little sentiment banner together, I'm gonna to take some little pieces of foam tape and add them to either side of this stamped piece. Then we can flip that over and add the little banner edges to it and make sure those are nice and lined up. So then I'm gonna take some adhesive and add that onto the back of both of those banner sides. And this will make it nice and easy to adhere right onto our card. So I'm gonna pull this in 
and add that right below the sloth. So that completes the card. I love how all the different card backgrounds that we created turn out differently and you can get some really fun results if you try out different color combinations and some, some of them might turn out really colorful and you can get some really awesome backgrounds. So I hope you guys learned a lot from this video and will stop by for the next lesson and I would love to see more of your class photos in the gallery. Thanks so much for stopping by.